Now I'd like to talk about the training screen options and features. So I'd like to go through the training screen of the Brain Avatar 4.0 and show you some of the different options that are new to the software. For instance, when we look at the actual training screen itself, we get to, to decide the scale of the signal. Okay, we defaulted at seven, but you can adjust that and that's gonna be the size basically or the, the display of the EEG. Also, how many seconds is displaying on the screen? Okay, so keep that in mind, it's pretty neat, but you, you have to take a look at it and see what's personal preference. Again, we default at 10, okay? But let's get this started so we can take a look at some things. As I hit, hit go, Unable to open COM port simply because I'm not plugged in. I'm gonna be using a simulation. Ready to start. Again, it's initializing my Z-scores. I do have it set up to do a four channel Z-score training. I hit yes. It says simulations running. Now, this is an example of only displaying the raw on the, the actual channels that are being trained and not acquiring the other 19. Notice that I see four here, and then I see the examples of the four below in the filtered waveforms. Okay, and then down below that, I see the actual text stats that's telling me when I'm meeting criteria or when I'm not meeting criteria. Okay, and then we can hear when criteria is being met. And what I'll do is I'll go to the volume mixer and I'll simply mute that so that we can actually hear what I'm saying. Okay, but that was an example of meeting criteria with the Z-score training. But for the simulation purpose, I just wanna show you some of the different options from the training screen. First, along the top, we have the same menus that we've seen before in the 3.0 family, where as I'm along the top, I can select and get some basic functions so I can turn notch filters on and off. And again, I have these on right now simply because I'm running this noise signal through here. Now see, look at the quality of that signal, not very good. This is a great example of why you do not want to default notch filters on. I need to know what the signal looks like before I do that. When we have a signal like this, it's that typical garbage in, garbage out. So I would want to clean up my electrode placement or find out is my amplifier too close to the computer? We want to make sure our feet aren't close to an extension cord. Something like that could be causing that kind of noise. But for this exercise, I'm going to put these notch filters on just so we have relatively usable data, okay, for this exercise. I can then also look through and I can save my EEG data. This is simply saving it as if you're recording it so you can replay it later. I can go to display and decide what do I wanna see on this particular tab. And again, the display is tab specific and we have multiple tabs on the new training screen. It's a really neat feature. Frequency bands, if I'm showing thermometers or I'm showing one of the other um, visual displays, which components do I want to see? So even if I'm not training something, I can view it. So it's a nice added. Sound, where am I getting my sounds for? Being a Z-score protocol, events related, okay? The themes, this is a new one, okay? So we have select built-in theme. Right now we're on black background, but let's check out white background, okay? See that? If you like white background with the black um, waveforms, we have that as an option now. We didn't have that before, okay? And then we can go to shades of gray. Just a little, not as bright. It's more of a gray with white. And then back to black. Okay, so that's a nice new feature in the Brain Master Brain Avatar 4.0 software that we did not have before. So you have that as an option. Okay, we have a setup option here to take us to our initial settings. So again, I can then go to settings and make any changes and most of the changes are available to do on the fly. 
Some are not, but most are, so keep that in mind. And I can always just go exit and go back to the training screen. Now then, dropping down a level, then we have our big main buttons, our go, meaning start the session, or stop, stop the session. Window is where we find a lot of our different, both auditory and video options with our multimedia player, our DVD player, our flash player, our different games, okay? These have always kind of been there. Okay, we hit okay. Client window's interesting, okay? What does client window do? Well, it gives us the capability of taking a separate window over to a client screen, okay? So if I have dual monitors, I'm able to run it right over there, okay? I do not, in this particular instance, I'm simply running a single monitor, so I, I don't have that capability, but with dual monitors, I can have a totally independent client screen with its own independent tabs. So they can be looking at something completely different than I am as a clinician. For instance, you could have a couple different flash games up, and you can bounce between flash games so that you don't have to start and stop. So keep that in mind, it's a really neat feature. Um, the other option we now have is we have our little camera. What this does is actually takes a screenshot of the, the system at that moment in which you can then later either you know put it in Word or put it somewhere where you can then type notes to it, but it literally makes a bitmap of the screen at that moment for you, okay? Later we'll be adding another feature that'll be recording the session for you so you'll be able to make little movies or MOV files from the actual data, okay? As I scroll down, you see you have a lot of screen space so you can put things all over the place, okay? The nice thing with Brain Avatar is you can also modify and move um, specific windows around. Let me go ahead and go up to the word display here. I'm gonna go ahead and let's go to tab, let's see two, oh, didn't mean to do that. Tab three, tab four. Let's go to tab four. And when I go to tab four, if I go up to display, I see what's selected so I can unselect that. I can go back and let's say I wanna see the Z scores. Then I can see my actual Z-score grid. So depending on the tab, I can bounce between different tabs and have all kinds of different information. Okay. Let's take a quick look. Okay, and then we have, for instance, our head display. Okay, so we see the functional head display, which you're gonna see there's gonna be an independent video specifically explaining what are we looking at here. Okay, but I'm using it just as an example as we can have, you know, our raw EEG on one, on one tab, our head display on another, our um, Z-score training panel and some damped flat maps and then our Z-score grid so that we could literally click between screens depending on what we want to look at. Okay, so all kinds of different options from the training screen. Let's take a look and see what this this EEG looks like if we modify the um, scale here. If I go to 10 you see how it got a little smaller? If I go up to four, see how it zooms in a little bit and you see a better example? Let's go to two, look at that, okay? Okay, and let's go back to the default. Okay, it's just how it's displaying, okay?